Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on my website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this right here is the Nikon 14 to 24 2.8S. It finishes the Hebrew Trinity. And in this video, I'm gonna put it up against the 14 to 30 F4 in a landscape situation to see which one you might wanna go with because there is a big price difference. Now, what did I photograph? Well, I went out to the football field to photograph some quarterbacks practicing at a quarterback camp so I could get close. I could go wherever I needed to go and having a 14 to 24 in the bag was fantastic. This rounds out the Hebrew Trinity. Yes, I've had the 14 to 30 F4 for a while, but that does not compete with a 14 to 24 2.8. This is the top of the top of the line Nikon piece of glass, and so far, I absolutely love it. I know I'm supposed to save that till the end of the review, but this is a fantastic lens that basically replaces the 14 to 24 2.8 F mount that's been out since 2007. That's old. It's about time it replaced it. So there's a lot to talk about and a bunch of different images to show you. So when we get to those images, don't forget you can download sample raw files over on the website. Now let's take a walk around this lens. It feels fantastic in your hands because it is not super heavy. It weighs in at 1.4 pounds or 650 grams versus the old one weighed in at 2.2 pounds or 1,000 grams. This is so balanced and nice on the camera that it's not even funny. It feels fantastic. The zoom mechanism going from 14 to 24 is super smooth. The design and feel of these lenses are fantastic. Just love the high-end S line. Now, being that I brought that up, Stephen, I'm gonna break out the other S line lens. This is the 14 to 30. You can see the difference in size right here. A lot of people have liked the 14 to 30 because it's compact and light and it's nice to travel with. Plus it's been out for a long time while you waited for this thing to happen. But what makes this an S line and what makes this be part of the same S line? That is the confusion that Nikon has created because you can tell me that S is fine and that's like pro and superior, but these both should not be S lines. This should not be an S line. This should be just a lens, a 14 to 30 F4. And honestly, I don't think F4s in this type of range should be considered top of the line, but this should have a gold ring around it. It should be the S, just call it S but with a gold ring, so it's just like what Canon does with red rings, and it's what Sony does with their orange rings, and it's what, even Fuji has a green ring around stuff, and that's Fuji, okay? So I'm gonna put this back for now, but I don't understand why they call this an S and this an S. Yes, they're fine, but there is a difference, and you need to separate that for people because this is a fantastic lens. Around the front of it, you still have this OLED display, which is fine. I still will never personally use it. You have a function button right here on the side. You have a switch for auto to manual, so you can switch that off right here. You control the image stabilization in the body, not in the lens, because, well, it doesn't have it in the lens. <laughs> I was like, oh, why doesn't it have a switch there? But even the 70 to 200 S 2.8 from Nikon, Where's my VR switch? Doesn't have a VR switch on the side, and we did review that one, so go ahead and give that a look. Down below, it is linked. There's also the display button right here to change how the display is what it's showing you, whether you want it to show how many millimeters you're at or you want to show the, uh, the, the, the manual focus, you can just hit that button. I still think that is a waste of time. Now, this is interesting. This is the lens cap right here. Now, it is shaped specifically for this lens. The old 14 to 24 had a cap and that cap didn't even have any buttons on it. It just slid on and it slid off and that was it. But now you have a cap that specifically fits up in one direction, you have to get it on right. Oh, like that, and now it's on. That's nice that you can do that. It also comes with this one lens hood right here, which is the smaller lens hood for when you're not putting filters 
on this lens. Now, Steven, zoom in here. Take a look at the front element. You see how it's not super bulbous? Let me show you something with the 12 to 24 from Sony, because this is very similar to what the old Nikon 14 to 24 looked like. What Nikon has done with this 14 to 24 2.8 is made the front element much flatter so that now you can actually get a screw on filter onto the front of it. But in order to do that, you need to get this that actually comes with the lens. This is a big lens cap. It pops off. This is the bigger lens hood that has filter threads, 112 millimeters. You're looking at at least $200 of filter to throw onto this, but at least you can do it with this lens. So we take off this lens hood, put it right there. We take this lens hood, we snap it in, and look how much larger it is but now you can put a screw on filter on there, then you can put the lens cap on, but look how much bigger it is in your bag. It's going to take up a lot of space, so the recommendation is you take it off, you put this lens cap back on, and this is probably how I would travel separately. Keep them separate. Um, one of the cool things is that you can get filter boxes for this that can slide in the square filters. And I think the higher end photographers are gonna go ahead and pick that up and probably not end up using the screw on filter as much. But now let me talk about using this in the real world. I use the Nikon Z6 II with the 14 to 24 to photograph the football players. I also use the Z6 II for whatever reason to go shoot the landscapes at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And the reason the Z7 is sitting here is because it's like, Jared, why didn't you take me to shoot? I'm more megapixels. And I'm like, shit, I messed up. I should have taken you, but I didn't. So I took it with the new camera and the pictures look great. You just don't have as many megapixels. So here's the first image. We're at 14 millimeters on this 100 ISO because I had beautiful morning light. It's about 8.30 in the morning around there and the light is just lighting up these subjects perfectly. The sky is nice and blue. The fake turf is nice and green. So it makes everything pop. Just love the sharpness that I'm getting out of this. Love the feel. The autofocus, even though it, I don't need it to be super fast for what I'm shooting right here, is lightning quick. You don't even notice that it's moving on that Z6 II. And if you wanna see my first impressions of the Z6 II, there is a link down below to check that out with the footage where you can see exactly what I'm shooting, which you get to see now as well. But we zoom in on here and Abe looks fantastic, nice and sharp. Got to focus on him great. And um, I just, I love what you can do with a 14 to 24. It is awesome to have that wide. Next, I moved on to this where the, the two players were throwing the ball back and forth only five yards apart. Yes, I kept my shadow in there because I wanted to get the shot. I didn't want to shoot from the other side, but I do have images from the other side so you can see uh, if there is flare or not. But you know, once I was able to move my focusing point to where I needed it to be, it's, it's fantastic. The colors, the tone, the lines, everything about it so far is fantastic. Let me jump in here real quick to show you how I'm gonna edit this image taken with the Nikon 14 to 24 2.8 and edited with some of FroPak 2's presets, starting with ACDC, boom. Then we're gonna go down to Charlie Brown. That's what Charlie Brown looks like. Dorothy with one click. Golden Grams with one click. Finally, Harvest Moon. Now these are just starting points. We can tweak from here, but the point of our presets is to give you a great starting point as well as speed up your raw workflow. So if you'd like to check out 15 all new custom Lightroom presets, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash fropack2. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide that they're for you, you can pick them up right now on sale, or you can pick up the fropack bundle, which includes fropack1 and fropack2 and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Speaking of lines, look at the line down here. Dan, go ahead and put both up on the screen. I want people to see this side by side. Look at the lines on the left edge. You see how it's bowed up on the one on the left? Well, on the one on the right, look at that. You see how it's straight across. That's with lens correction on in 
Lightroom. It's almost like they, they do this on purpose. It's, it seems to automatically be on, even though I turn it off in camera, I turn off the corrections. It just seems to put it on there automatically in your raw file, but now you can turn it off. So the difference is it bows up a little bit. And I know they talk about pin cushioning in the middle, but in this case, it bows on the edges because we have the line here and there it's straight. Which do I prefer? For most situations, I prefer the natural bowing. I don't like as it how it stretches things out on the edges sometimes. It starts to look fake. And I think the natural bowing just is better. It just draws me in to the image. Would people really see the difference? Most people, the answer is no, but I prefer taking the correction and leaving it off because it's also technically cropping your image just a little bit. You lose a little when you stretch it. We can see this with this picture. Look at the bottom right hand corner. Look around that red line. You see that little red line that's sticking out? Well, when I go to the next shot, there's more of that red line in there because that one is the uncorrected image. Now, let me tell you how I got this shot. I laid down on the ground with the 14 to 24 to give myself a much better angle to get AB, that's his name, AB, the quarterback right here, in a really cool shot. So I laid down, I had the auto area AF on here and it found him perfectly. I went into the high plus mode to take these photos and I just waited till he made his move and boom, the colors on him are fantastic. The tones, everything about this lens, I absolutely love the feel. I love the images, I love everything about the S higher end line of glass. The Hebrew Trinity, Fantastic. It, it's one of those things that would bring me back to Nikon when the pro bodies come out and when the autofocus gets on par with the Sony and the Canon. Moving on to the next image, now I'm shooting directly into the sun on purpose. Normally wouldn't do this, but I know you guys want to see, is there a lot of flare? And we have lens things happening. We have the sun coming into the image, but I'm not seeing any of the flare, any of the rainbows, any of the imperfections that you start to get. Now this is shooting directly into the sun. I don't have a sample here where I was off to the side to see if you get any refraction or you get any rainbowing uh, in it, but I didn't notice it in any of my shots. And this still turned out really well, the colors, the tones. So really nice on the Z6 II. This lens is gonna be fantastic on all of the Nikon cameras, even down to the Z50 and the Z5. So that's the football pictures. Really happy with the results. Next, I went out to the Philadelphia Museum of Art because why not shoot stairs that go straight across? Because if you're gonna see Boeing, this is going to do it, unless you're in Seattle, because that's where Boeing's headquarters is. Ha ha ha, that's a funny joke. You know, the airplane company, Boeing? Get it? Steven's not laughing. Anyway, let's take a look at the first shot right here. This one is 14 millimeters. I am at f2.8 ISO 100. Like I said, on the Z6 II, I probably should have taken out the higher megapixel camera for the landscape. I didn't, but that's okay. Colors look fantastic. The edges look fantastic. Everything about it looks really good. But what I wanna show you is with the lens correction on and the lens correction off. So the one on the left-hand side that you're looking at is lens correction is off. Now, when we go to the next image and it's on the right side of the screen, lens correction is on. So look, on, off. Are you seeing it bow? Look at the right side where it says art. Look how it's bowing up on the edges and then look how it flattens it out, but it also crops your image in a little bit to make that correction. Now you can still go in there in Lightroom and tweak the correction to your desire. Um, that's up to you, but look at how with it off, it kind of gives you a smile, a slight smile, like Sarah smiles, you know, Hall and Oates, they're from Philadelphia. They met at Temple University, by the way, during a fire drill, they met outside and were like, hey, I'm Daryl Hall. And he's like, hey Daryl, I'm John Oates. I got curly hair. And would you like to be in a band? And they're like, Sarah smile, let's make a band. Oh, there was a girl Sarah next to them and she was smiling. I just made that part up. The first part is actually true. Anyway, so you can see the difference between the bowing on the edges um, and the, these both, these images are at 5.6, so you can download them because I didn't just want to shoot at 2.8. Let me cut in here real quick to say, are you subscribed here on YouTube? Because I don't want you to miss any of the videos when they go live, so please, 
hit that subscribe button. But let's look at the 2.8 and look at the vignetting that you get around the image. Yes, I color corrected these, but even without it color corrected, you can still see at 2.8 the vignetting around the edges. I don't really care about that. I love, I actually think natural vignetting draws you in to the frame and into the image, and I'm not a big fan of getting rid of it. The colors, the tones, everything about this is fantastic. But the other question is, how does this stack up against the 14 to 30? Or how does the 14 to 30 stack up to this, even though, because it's much less expensive? So this image right here is the 14 to 30, and this one is at F4. The next image, same thing. 14 to 30, we are at 14 millimeters at F4. I don't believe I corrected these, so these are uncorrected just straight out of the camera, and they look fine. I, I don't really think that most people are going to be able to tell the difference between them, but if you're a working professional, you have the money, I always recommend going with the 2.8 or better. But if you need to travel and you need lighter, then maybe the 14 to 20, the 14 to 30 is for you, but honestly, the size difference, I mean, you can see the size difference right here. You can see that one's bigger than the other and it takes up more space. But man, to get that 2.8 and the faster focus for what you're doing, I mean, landscapes doesn't matter as much, I would go with this bad boy. But the pricing is what it may come down to for you. The 14 to 24 2.8S comes in at $2,400. That is an expensive piece of glass. And the old 14 to 24 F mount still sells for 1350 bucks. Is that one that I suggest that you pick up to save some money? The answer is probably not. Um, that is super soft on the edges. It is, it's older, it's 14 years old. At that point, I'd probably spend the money on the 14 to 30 F4 versus buying the old 2.8 that's 14 years old. Now the 14 to 30 comes in at 1100 bucks. It is a lot less expensive. Personally, like I said, if you're a full-time working professional out in the field, you buy the 2.8. If you're not, this 14 to 30 is a nice option for 1100 bucks. I do think that the colors are gonna be more superior S lens on the 2.8 than what you're gonna pull out of the 14 to 30. But the 14 to 30, you can put filters on the end just like you can do now with the 14 to 24. So before we finish this up, there's two more tests to be done. There's the Steven. Sniff test. That's correct, and the? Wind tunnel test. That's right, there's both. Should I do them both at the same time? <laughs> That's a new one. That's the sniff wind tunnel test at the same time. And all I smelled was like my smoothie because I blew on the lens and then sucked it back in. And it's like bananas and protein and chocolate protein and, and oats. And not John Oats either. That's funny. That's funny. Anyway, um, did it pass the wind tunnel test? The answer is yeah, yeah, definitely pass the wind tunnel test and the sniff tunnel test. Ooh, sniff tunnel test, that's a new one. Anyway, Nikon did a fantastic job with the 14 to 24 2.8. Would I have liked it to have been 12 to 24? Yeah, I would have. But the trade-off is you can now have a much smaller lens, it's less bulbous, you can put screw-on filters in there, it comes with the different lens hoods and lens caps, they did a great job, it's expensive, it's 2400 bucks, but it will be in my bag when I shoot Nikon again one day. Uh, will it be in yours? Let me know down below. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.